have the most news in the morning. CNN's American Morning, weekday, 6 a.m. Eastern. You know, a lot of people are wondering, are these freak weather conditions just a coincidence or are they somehow linked? What's your take? The take is this, is that all these things are the kinds of things that we would expect to happen as the planet warms up. And what we're seeing is that overall the planet's warming about 0.35 degrees per decade and places like Greenland are warming up even faster, like three and a half degrees per decade. And all these events from heat waves to stronger monsoons to loss of ice from around the world, they're all consistent with that. Where it gets a little bit tricky, though, is assigning any one specific event to say, oh, the cause of this event is definitely global warming. That's kind of where we get to the edge of the research. I got you. But when you take a look at the numbers, the combined global land and ocean average surface temperature for June 2010 was the warmest on record. Um, before that, the record was June, I think, 2005. Is there a larger conclusion to be drawn, or is this part of a cycle? Say it may be a new planet on the edge of our solar system. It's called Tiki, named for an ancient Greek goddess. If it's real, Tiki is a supergiant, four times the size of Jupiter, made of hydrogen and helium. Scientists from the University of Louisiana say it hasn't been found because it's so far away, 15,000 times farther from the sun than Earth. A UFO hovers over one of the holiest sites in Islam, the Dome of the Rock on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, the spot where the Prophet Muhammad ascended to heaven, built on top of a site sacred to Judaism. An American woman takes it all in her stride, seen it all before. We had, we've seen them in Mississippi like this, but never like this. easily dismissed as a hoax until you see this. The same event, or so it seems, filmed from a different angle by someone else. The glowing ball of light dropping until it hangs just over the dome of the rock. These spectators a little more impressed. Whoa! <laughs> The ball suddenly shooting off as if disturbed. If it's a hoax, it's very well done. We are not alone, or are we? Scientists are one step closer to understanding the galaxy following the discovery of more than a thousand new planets outside the Earth's solar system. The celestial bodies were detected by NASA's orbiting telescope and more than 50 of the planets have the potential to support life forms. The deeper we look, the more we find. Not just stars in their billions, but orbiting around them planets as well. New worlds emerging from the dark in far greater numbers than expected. And this is what's behind the latest wave of discoveries, the Kepler Space Telescope, aimed at one piece of sky and unearthing a new solar system. has announced the discovery of a strange new solar system, a collection of six planets orbiting around a sun-like star. The mystifying discovery illustrates just how much variety is possible in the universe. Five of the planets were found to be in a closer orbit to their star than any planet in Earth's solar system. Jack Lissauer is a scientist with NASA. We're just amazed at this gift that nature, not the magazine, but with a capital N, has given us. There's only one word that I can think of that adequately describes the new finding we're announcing today. The Kepler-11 system of six transiting planets is Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. NASA has announced several discoveries in the search for planets outside our solar system to the delight of astronomers worldwide. The findings all center around the Kepler telescope, which finds planets by watching them pass in front of their home stars. The New York Times reports the search has been fruitful. In a long-awaited announcement, scientists operating NASA's Kepler Planet Hunting Satellite reported Wednesday that they had identified 1,202 possible planets orbiting other stars, potentially tripling the number of known planets in the universe. The researchers discovered that small planets like Earth are more common than large planets like Jupiter. They identified more than 50 such small planets that could have liquid water, many of them in multi-planet systems. 
Stars with multiple planets are especially sought after since watching how the planets interact tells us more about them. The data uncovered 200 such systems. A blogger for Discover Magazine directs us to one unusual system called Kepler-11. Astronomers have found a complete solar system of six planets orbiting a sun-like star, and it's really weird. Five of the six planets huddle closer to their star than Mercury does to the sun. Earlier this year, the Kepler team discovered the first ever planet ever confirmed to be made of rock instead of gas. With discovery after discovery piling up, the exoplanet researcher tells Wired it's enough to get astronomers a little choked up. Kepler is making people's dreams come true. It sounds kind of corny, but it's really true. It's changing exoplanet science as we know it. At a press conference, NASA scientists pointed out it took 15 years for astronomers to find just 500 planets. Kepler collected its data in just four months from an area one four hundredth of the sky. Think they'll be finding another Earth Here's anytime Goliath soon? 581D, which might be the first habitable planet beyond Earth. According to National Geographic, it seems to have just the right conditions to suggest simple life exists there. It's just the right distance from its sun. Any closer and water would boil away. Any further, and it would freeze. Ideal conditions for life to have evolved. And if comets have struck, delivering water and organic materials, then life, complex beings like us, even civilizations like our own, could be down there. But this isn't the first time scientists have glanced over Glides 581 for possible hospitable planets. Two other candidates were found here, though they were ruled out after closer examination. Paul Butler, one of the discoverers, explains why Glides 581D is the first viable candidate. The significance of this discovery is that it's the first time we found a planet that has the right mass and is the right distance to have liquid water and a substantial atmosphere. People have been getting closer and closer over the last couple of years. They've been finding planets that are on the hot edge of the habitable zone and on the cold edge of the habitable zone. But finally, we have one right in the middle. But we're not ready to go explore this planet, at least not yet. According to Science Daily, it would take us 3,000 lifetimes to get there. And there are still more downsides. If Glides 581D does turn out to be habitable, it would still be a pretty strange place to visit. The denser air and thick clouds would keep the surface in a perpetual murky red twilight, and its large mass means that surface gravity would be around double that on Earth. Truth be told, scientists still need more data to determine conclusively whether Glides 581D is habitable. Space.com suggests they probably have to detect and characterize its atmosphere directly, which is probably still years off. It requires the development of new and advanced telescopes. Human-made probes won't be getting to the planet anytime soon. With current technology, it would take spacecraft hundreds of thousands of years to make the 20-light-year trek. For Newsy.com, I'm Anna Campagna. As a smudge on the telescope's new wide-field camera, but it could turn out to be a 13-billion-year-old galaxy, possibly the oldest ever seen. I'm joined now by Michi Okaku, professor of physics at City University of New York. He's also the author of the forthcoming book, Physics of the Future. Good to see you. Well, it was great to have you yeah. on. Um, so the headline in the Washington Post, Hubble spots presumed oldest galaxy, hot, faint, and 13 billion years old. This is a magnificent piece of science. You know, children ask the question, where is the farthest star? Well, in some sense, we found it. This is the farthest star that the Hubble Space Telescope can see, and it's also the oldest star, dating back to almost creation itself. But, Michio, you said we found it, but they're still calling it a candidate galaxy, so it could turn out to be something else far less exciting than the passion that you're showing right now. No, I'm pretty sure that this is it. Uh, for example, okay. when you look in a mirror, you don't really see yourself. You see yourself as you were a half a, bil a billionth of a second ago. So the night sky, the stars are a few hundred years old in terms of the light. Uh -huh. This star has been beaming for 13 billion years, and the universe is only 13.7 billion years old. We were talking in the commercial break, and my executive producer was asking about time traveling, going 
back in time and you say that's what we've done with this discovery. That's right. We go back in time every time you look at the sky and light from the stars, some of those stars are older than the dinosaurs. The light has been going for billions of years and beyond that, beyond the farthest galaxy lies Genesis itself, the creation of the universe. The explosion, the Big Bang that created the entire universe, that's what lies beyond this galaxy. So we are one step closer to that. We're one step closer to actually getting the secret of the origin of the universe itself. What happens next in this uh, potential discovery? How is it confirmed and, and we learn that it is actually not a candidate but real, as you point out? Well, we have to analyze the light again. The Hubble Space Telescope its shutter was open for a hundred hours. Wow. You know, on a camera, you only open it for a half a second, <laughs> okay, right. less than a hundred hours to get that faint light to, to photograph uh, by the Hubble Space Telescope. So it has to be verified. Michio, we hope we come back on when uh, more verification comes in. But right now, this is thrilling news. Thank you. Mm -hmm. More on Time evolves and comes to a place where it renews again. There is first a purification time, then there is renewal time. We are getting very close to this time now. We were told that we would see America come and go. And in a sense, America is dying from within. I want to take this opportunity to update the American people about the situation in Libya. Last month, protesters took to the streets across the country to demand their universal rights in a government that is accountable to them and responsive to their aspirations. But they were met with an iron fist. Freedom of assembly, freedom of expression, and freedom of the press. Come here, Chris. Do you want to get arrested or no? Are pillars of an open and inclusive society. <laughs> There is a clear responsibility by the Egyptian government to hold accountable those responsible for these attacks. <laughs> sought nothing more than to exercise their universal rights. We call upon the Iranian government to abide by the international obligations that it has to respect the rights of its own people. We call for the immediate release of all who have been unjustly detained. And I'm confident that history will be on the side of those who seek justice. Thank <laughs> you.